Okay, we're going to now look at a different kind of uh, filter than we looked at last time. The last time we used a cavity filter. This uh, particular filter is going to be a little different. It uses uh, uh, some uh, resonant elements that are lined up here. I'm not going to show you the interior because this is not mine, it's borrowed. But um, anyway, we'll see what the passband of this particular unit is. Um, we start out by uh, doing our usual and setting up a cable from the tracking generator to the spectrum analyzer input. And uh, first thing I'm going to do, I, I know for a fact that this is at 169 plus or minus a megahertz. Uh, so we're going to set the analyzer up to uh, cover uh, about 140 to one, um, 180 megahertz. So frequency here, start 140 and stop 180 megahertz. Uh, however, it turns out that I, I have a uh, piece of paper here that has the filter as seen on a uh, looks like HP um, sweep generator or shall we say uh, network analyzer. This is the manufacturer's uh, drawing, or not drawing, but actual plot. So we're going to use this for our purposes. They had it centered at 169. They had a span of 50 megahertz, so we'll do the same thing. So 169 frequency, center frequency, 169 megahertz. And then we'll do a span of 50 megahertz. So now we have exactly the same thing that uh, they had when they did their uh, evaluation of this unit. Now, this thing has been kicking around for a while. It's actually uh, 2004 or something like that that this was made. So it may not be identical anymore. Time has possibly uh, changed the response slightly, but we'll see what happens and see what the uh, thing is actually doing today. So we have our connection here. So we'll put on the tracking generator. Well, first, Let's put the bandwidth down at something more reasonable to get enough uh, uh, dynamic range here. We'll go to 30 kilohertz. I guess it's down to 75. Uh, let's go to 10 kilohertz. I guess it's down around 80 dB. Then um, to get a little bit more dynamic range, let's also change this thing to maybe to go to amplitude here, the second screen, turn the RF preamp on. Okay, so now we're about minus 85 dB, maybe a little uh, less than that, but we can also go back to bandwidth and put our video bandwidth a little tighter. Let's say three kilohertz instead of 10. All right, so there we are. We've got 80 d, 85 dB here uh, to play with in our sweep between uh, uh, one, what, 169 in the center, plus or minus uh, 25 megahertz. Turn on the tracking generator here. Tracking generator levels at minus 20. We want to get the full benefit, so we'll go to zero dBm. All right, we'll turn on the tracking generator and now we're up here. Now we're not too bad on the uh, uh, tracking generator here even as it is right now, but we will normalize it even though there's a little burble here. Uh, all right, and it'll sweep a couple of times here. Uh, well, oh, I have to, this gives me the normalize screen to hit the normalize button down here and then I have to hit this, turn it on usually hold that up briefly and then let go and it'll sweep across a couple of times and then uh, zero that out but this is uh, up too high here for my taste 
So I'm going to uh, also take the normalized reference position 10 dB down. So 10. Wait a second. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Tracking generator. Normalize. Normalize reference level. Have to push the button. Always have to push the button. And then go 10 dB. All right, so now we're here, but this is in the way. So we'll go to the system and we'll uh, change the display line here. Uh, uh, or not, no, the active uh, function to center. All right, it gets that down here. So that's a little better and out of our way. So uh, there we go. We'll pull this off. See, we're still down around minus 80 here. So that's uh, pretty good. It's fairly flat across there. Still see a little bit of a burble, but not su sufficient to get excited about. I've already put the adapters on here, so we'll just have to plug these on. It simplifies life. If you want a little more accurate uh, measurement, you use the right cables that, uh, and connectors. But there we go. That's what this thing looks like in terms of what we are getting today on this particular item. And it's centered up on 169 nicely. And it goes down uh, to uh, minus 78 uh, on the edge here and minus uh, 75 on that edge. You will see, if you look at this, that it's a little bit more than 78 here, uh, 75 I mean here, and, uh, and here. That's because we're running into our noise level on this particular uh, spectrum analyzer, but it's not an expensive one. This network analyzer this was done on is probably uh, $50,000 in its day. And so I'm not going to get too excited about that. So let's see what our bandwidth is and we'll just take a marker here. We'll uh, find out where the 60 dB, well let's make it the 70 dB point is. So we'll hit uh, marker 1 here. We'll have it on normal. Uh, we are presently at minus 2.76. I believe that this actually says that it's uh, that it's more like uh, minus 2.1 looks like. So we're uh, a little bit off, but again, as I said, this thing has been kicking around for a while, so that could explain part of that. All right. And uh, let's go to marker 2. We'll find out what the lower edge of this thing is. Uh, turn it on normal here. And we go from uh, 2.7 to uh, 5.7 to be 3 dB. So there's our 3 dB a lower marker at 166.583. Our upper marker uh, will make marker 3, and 5.7, well, 6.4, that's close enough. There is a slight tilt here. Um, so that uh, is at 171. So it does its 168 to 170 uh, range that we uh, have as a spec for this thing. And then number four, we'll find out what we have in terms of uh, the upper end here at 70 dB, which is right here. So at 70 dB down, we are at 188 and going the other direction here. We're at uh, 151. So as you can see, we have gotten rid of a good portion of the band here below and above our operating frequency. Not as steep as can be done with cavity filters perhaps, but a much smaller unit. And the band pass is uh, 2 megahertz wide. So that's probably a, a good 
product for some applications. All right, let's find out where everything is here. We will hit the uh, the marker screen two and make a marker table. So at one sixty nine. We're at minus 2.89. At 166.5, we're at minus 5.79, about 3 dB below that. Uh, we're at 5.72, just 3 dB below that. At 171.583, and at 151.416, uh, we're at minus 70 uh, to give everybody a pretty good idea of what this filters pass capability is. Now let's do one more thing. Let's get rid of the marker table here. We'll turn it off. We'll leave that and record that by hitting the uh, trace here. We're on clear right now, the trace type. And we'll put it at freeze. So now, now that's frozen. And uh, now we'll take a look at what the situation is on the return loss on this device by using our uh, directional coupler, which is in a box back here. So now what we want to do, put the directional coupler in here. We'll take the coupling output into the input to the spectrum analyzer. We'll take the output side of this thing because we want to look at the return loss uh, and put the tracking generator on that side. We will turn on trace uh, two here. Well, let's make it three. I think it shows up a little better. It's now on blank and uh, we'll put it on clear right. Now you see that we're about 20 dB down over that whole range. I'm not going to uh, equalize this. This is a 20 dB coupler, as you can see. And so we expect to be 20 dB down. And that's a good enough place to find out what our uh, losses look like. We'll see what the losses are at our three frequen uh, four frequencies here, simply by uh, taking this guy, If I can find it, we'll put on a coupler on this. And we'll put that on the input to this thing. And I'll keep the same input. Well, that doesn't look very good. But that's because there's no load on the output. So that's easy enough to fix. We happen to have a 50 ohm load. That's what this guy is. Okay, now we see what it looks like when it's actually loaded down. So, uh, at the 3 dB points here, we're down about 3 dB, maybe a little bit more here, maybe 6, 7 dB. And we're at uh, 50, 20, and thir almost 30 dB in the middle here. So actually in the part of the filter here that we're interested in, which is 169 to uh, 170, let's find out what our return loss is. So we'll go to um, the markers here, marker 1. We already have where we want it. Marker 2. We'll put this actually at one, uh, 168. So 168 megahertz. Ah, yeah, now we're t more than 20. And uh, we'll go to marker 3 and put that at 170. 170 megahertz. So as you see, our return loss 
is more than 20 dB down, which is better than 1.2, something like that, to, to one standing wave. 14 dB would actually be uh, 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 one and a half to one, so that would be uh, somewhere around in here. So this filter is fine over its uh, specified range. We don't have to worry about it. And uh, there we have the full uh, display of the unit. Um, and so we've more or less duplicated the results that we saw earlier. Let's see what happens if we happen to load this with 75 ohms, which would represent a, an antenna that, say, had one and a half to one standing wave on it. Okay, that actually looks a little better as far as flatness on, at the bottom, but of course the return loss in this case is in the neighborhood of 14 or 15 dB, which is exactly what we'd expect at one and a half to one. So we have no real problem with the match on this thing. It, uh, the, the match is, is good over that whole area. And uh, I wouldn't be complaining if this filter was in a system that I had on the air. Now, to just to take a little bit more disciplined approach, I will equalize this thing uh, and see what it uh, gives us in that case. Okay, now, well, we've got this set up so that uh, it should, uh, with the open here, give us a, a line along here if we hit the normalization on and drop the whole thing down here, which is exactly what it does. So... What we have now is uh, a reference level still at the same zero point here. However, I'm not certain that that trace is turned on. So let's go back to trace. That trace is turned off now. That's probably because this is on here. So we'll go back and put it on clear right. And now you see it turn blue here because it's, it's right here. And so the trace is right there on zero. And it's equalized, so or normalized. We still have our uh, load on that end. We'll put this on this end and see what it looks like. Okay, and that, by the way, is uh, the 75 ohm load, the blue one. So uh, there we go. That's what it looks like with the 75 ohms. If we go to the 50 ohms here, we'll see an improvement. And there's the 50 ohms. It's not too much difference between what we had before and what we have now, but it is more accurate because we've uh, normalized the trace and so we're at the same scale reference all the way through on this particular uh, version of the thing. So there you go. You, you can get these to overlay in this fashion so you'll know what the loss is here and you'll know what the loss is here, uh, or return loss at least, and uh, that's what we have. And obviously uh, over the desired bandwidth here above my finger, uh, everything's below 20 dB, which is fine. Another thing that you should know is that if you want to, you can go to uh, amplitude here, scale division, go to 5 dB, and there's the thing expanded out because it doesn't change anything except for the scale. So here we have an expanded version of that thing. So that, uh, that's one way of uh, using this machine for checking filters and checking the return loss. Yeah, perhaps not as accurate as a $50,000 one, but good enough, thank you.